This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. What is going on? I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show, Winning Cures Everything, at Winning Cures on Twitter or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything, or just go to winningcureseverything.com. It's got everything that you could possibly need. Go over there, knock that thing out. Uh, Today is Monday, March 11th. As always, every Monday up until, well, this coming week, uh, we will be discussing bubble teams and uh, who's in the field, who's not in the field, etc. Along with today, Fox is starting a new college football morning show to compete with College Game Day. We're going to talk about that, and I've got some college basketball picks for tonight. Uh, We are 191, 169, and 7 on the season that is turning a profit. That's a good thing. Uh, I got some games that I like this evening. Getting closer to tournament time. We need to get some wins under our belt. We got them tonight. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can go check out more information on those over at tunicatravel.com. Let's go ahead and jump into today's first topic. Uh, oh, you know what? Before I do that, March 21st, March 22nd, Thursday and Friday, the first two days of the NCAA tournament, we will be, myself and Chris, my co-host, who is not here for the daily show, but is here for the other stuff during the week, uh, we will be at Samstown Casino, Thursday, March 21st, Friday, March 22nd, we are broadcasting live from Samstown in Tunica, inside the sports book, getting ready for March Madness, we're going live at 10 a.m. every day on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, Come out, hang out with us, check out the show. We're staying at Samstown in Tunica that night. Uh, We're going to be staying in the hotel. We're there watching basketball all day. We're going to be making bets on basketball literally all day long. So, come hang out with us. It's going to be a good time. Check that thing out. Uh, Let's jump into the first topic, bubble teams, right? Which teams are in, which teams are out? We're going to go through the first four teams that are out. And then the 12 last teams that are in, the last at largest. So we'll start off, we always do this by bracket matrix, right? They have got, uh, let's see, it looks like they've got 87 brackets now that are updated regularly, like every day. They go through, they average them out, they go by seed line, they discuss who's in, who's out, etc. The first four teams out. So the first team that they have out, Indiana. They show up on 42 brackets uh, in most cases, they are an 11 seed or a 12 seed. Uh, their average is 11.43. Ton of quad one wins, ton of quad one losses. Uh, they've got an insanely difficult schedule. They went through a spell where they lost like 9, 10 games in a row, 11 games in a row. I mean, they lost a ton of games. They were 12-2 and two at one point. Uh, I mean, they, they might need to get a couple of wins in the Big Ten Tournament. I think they've got a really good shot of getting in right now. So, Indiana first four out. Belmont first four out. So, that's another one where they lost to Murray State in the conference championship game. That's a really good basketball team. All their metrics, everything is is wonderful. I would put Belmont in just because they haven't had the opportunities doesn't mean that they wouldn't win those opportunities. Uh, I would Next one up, Creighton. I don't know that I would have them in. Uh, they're, they're one of the first four out. I don't know that I would put Creighton in just because they haven't been consistent enough all year and the record is not that great. Uh, first four out. Next, uh, the last one there is Alabama. I I mean, they lost three straight to end the season. Uh, they went two and six over the last eight games when they, they just needed one win. One win. Had plenty of chances. Had a lot of games at home. Lost, to, like got blown out by Florida. Got beat by LSU. Got beat by Auburn. Uh, lost at Arkansas, not not a good thing. As as you guys can see, I'm doing this from home today. Uh, so so our dog is uh is hanging out in the background. That is Sookie. You won't see the little one. She's uh way too short for the camera. Anyway, let's jump into the 12 teams that are in. The last team in, they have Clemson. They show up on 70 out of 87 brackets. I think I would go with that. Uh, Clemson got a good win over the weekend over Syracuse. They needed it. They don't have a lot of really good wins, but they got some really close losses to really good teams. So Clemson is in. Ohio State, they are the next to last. Uh, Took an absolute, 
just gut punch of a loss at home to Wisconsin on Sunday. Had really came back from 22 points down or 23 points down in the second half at home against Wisconsin. Should have won the ball game. Either way, Temple, they've got in in Fran Dunphy's last season. I think I would go with that. Temple uh, got a nice home win against UCF over the weekend. So I would go with that. And by winning that game, they avoided having to play Memphis, at least in the in their first game, uh, in FedEx Forum inside of Memphis, Tennessee, in the conference tournament. Always a good thing. That's You do not want to have to deal with that if you're looking for a win to, to boost your chances there. Another number 12 seed, North Carolina State, they've got in. Uh, I think I would probably go with that. They got a much-needed road win at Boston College after taking just a just an awful loss at home to Georgia Tech, who was shorthanded, by the way. So North Carolina State, they've got in. Arizona State, an 11 seed. Florida, an 11 seed. TCU, an 11 seed. Texas. Now, I don't know that I would have Texas in this field, right? They are... What are they? Sixteen and fifteen, sixteen and fourteen, something like that. Uh, not. I mean, they've got a tough strength of schedule. I got that, but there's just not enough wins there. So, I if I were putting out a bracket, which I, I might do this week, we'll see. Uh, if I were putting a bracket out, I don't think I would have Texas in. I think I would much rather have Belmont, who I I have seen them and I want to see them against better competition than Texas, who I know will probably get beat by mediocre competition. Just just my uh, forte. And then the last four that are in, these are all 10 seeds. St. John's, again, 20 and 11, 8 and 10 in the Big East. Eh, I mean, who cares, right? Uh, number 10, Minnesota. Got a good win over Purdue last week. That should lock them in. Utah State got that big win at home over Nevada a couple weeks ago. And number 10, Seton Hall. I'll, I'll take all of those. All of those seem fine to me. Um, Texas, eh, not a big fan of that. If Florida loses to Arkansas in the first round of the SEC tournament, probably not going to roll with that one either. But either way, um, so, I mean, the bracket matrix, I like what they're doing. I don't know if anybody else that I would – I mean, the, the bubble is so weak this year. It is so weak. It's just awful. Just awful. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about Fox's college football pregame show they're going to have rob stone uh reggie bush matt leinert brady quinn and then they just signed urban meyer and they are wanting to compete with espn's college game day by putting together and this is what a source called it the mount rushmore of college football over the last 15 years and they're going to do some of the stuff from inside the studio and some of the stuff out on the road for some of the marquee games. I'm a little... I don't know that this is the way to go at competing with college game day. It's not the names that you have. Lee Corso was never like a a big name, right? He is now because he's good at his job. Kirk Herbstreet was never like a big name. He's just really good at his job. Reese Davis, the same thing. Uh, Desmond Howard, yeah, he... Super Bowl MVP, Heisman Trophy, all that for Michigan. That's not what makes him big, and he's not one of the big names on it. It's Reese Davis, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet. You know, David Pollock, whatever. Maria Taylor, whatever. Like, they're great, but, like, that show is Corso, Herbstreet, Reese Davis, and the fans that show up every week. They they don't do in-studio shows. What makes that show unique is the atmosphere and the fans, and you want to tune in and catch everybody partying and whatnot. I mean, they do three hours. This Fox show is going to be one hour. And if it's just like an NFL pregame show where you're just trying to get people you know, to tune into your channel before your game starts, then that's okay. I was surprised that this is going to be on Fox instead of FS1. They, they tried this in studio a few years ago with Clay Travis and whoever else was on that show. And the ratings were not good. They couldn't compete with College Game Day. There was no purpose in it. Now this, one thing that they do have is they will be on network television as opposed to cable. So for the cord cutters that are out there that just have the antenna and whatever, that's one thing to uh, to kind of draw them in. 
College Game Day averages, what, almost 2 million people watching every Saturday morning? That is an absurd number. So even if you can get 500,000 of that, that's pretty good. And it's probably better than what you had on at the 10 a.m. slot before, right? So this this will show at, um, let's see, I believe it's 11 a.m. Eastern. Yeah, so 10 a.m. Central. Uh, you know, it's only an hour long. It's Rob Stone, Urban Meyer, Reggie Bush, Matt Leinart, Brady Quinn. Again, it is not the names. We'll see how the chemistry is. We'll see how they do. Don't know that I'm a big fan of the idea, but I mean, you got to do something, right? So might as well, uh, might as well try something. Let's move into college basketball picks for the evening. Again, it's Monday, March 11th. Went one and five on Sunday. Not good. Saturday was not great either. Went five and five, but we did hit two parlays. Uh, Friday went four and two. Uh, Thursday went three and three. Went one and four last Wednesday, four and one last Tuesday, two and one last Monday. We're we're okay. We're doing okay, right? So if you hit some of these underdogs, you hit some of these uh, power uh, uh, parlays. Like we're we're okay. I've got some games that I like this evening. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into them. First off, Nebraska Omaha plus one against uh, Indiana Fort Wayne. Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne, whatever you want to call it. Nebraska, Omaha, plus one. Uh, they won both of the regular season matchups. I like them a lot here. They they match up insanely well with IPFW. Uh, so take Nebraska, Omaha, plus the one there. Uh, next, I've got a money line parlay. Take Central Michigan, number 870. Hofstra, number 878. And Wofford, number 894. That's minus 115, so you bet 115 bucks to win 100. There you go. Uh, I think that one's going to hit pretty easily. Uh, next up, Hofstra minus 10 against Delaware. Hofstra destroyed Delaware both times they played them this year. It was not even a game. I, both of them, I believe, were 20-plus point blowouts. So I will take Hofstra minus the 10 here. Uh, next up, Northern Illinois minus 4 against Delaware. That, that's the wrong one. Uh, Northern Illinois minus 4 against Ohio. Against Ohio. Uh I like Northern Illinois here. They, again, it's all about matchups. Once you get into conference tournaments, Northern Illinois matches up insanely well with Ohio. Give me the Huskies in that one. And then finally, last one, Monmouth plus five against Iona. Uh, I bought half a point on this one just to be on the safe side. I think Monmouth has a good chance to win the game. Uh, Monmouth's got a really good coach. And, again, matchups. They match up really well with Iona. So, I'm going to take Monmouth on that one. As always, you can find the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Just go up to the navigation bar, click on Gambling Picks. It's right there. Or if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, the link is right down in the description. We will be back again tomorrow with even more stuff. The big Power 5 conference tournaments begin tomorrow on Tuesday. We're excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. I cannot wait. We thank you guys for coming in and checking out the show. We will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.